I'm Leo Walter for Kick Guru. This laptop is the ASUS Republic of Gamers GX700. It is the world's first, as far as we're aware, liquid cooled laptop. And this is the luggage in which it is supplied. Let's just get that off the table. Partly to protect the thing, uh, partly to give it some bling, and partly because in addition to the laptop, you have this uh, liquid cooled uh, dock. Uh, the laptop is very similar to a laptop I saw previously, uh, which was the G752. Uh, that was a £2,000 all singing or dancing laptop with everything inside. This is an all singing or dancing laptop with Core i7 SSD Ray, GTX 980 desktop graphics, uh, USB 3 ports, USB Type C, two of those, yada yada yada, everything, just everything. The one uh, not question mark, but aspect of the spec worth mentioning that is slightly less than you might assume is that this is full HD rather than 4K. There is a 4K variant, this is full HD. Putting that to one side, uh, so this whole setup is three and a half thousand pounds. So two grand for the basic laptop-ish, and then 1500 pounds to make it liquid cooled. Uh, we'll come to that in a bit. So here the laptop, uh, ports and connectors on, moves the dock slightly to avoid banging them together. Ports and connectors down the two sides, as mentioned, so USB 3s on both sides, two USB uh, 3.1 type Cs over here. And then on the rear, and this is where it gets particularly exciting, we have, uh, and photos as ever on Kit Guru and close ups and such like, we have two uh, liquid uh, ports, uh, quick uh, release valves. Uh, one in one out. We have two sort of day tents uh, for locating on the uh, dock and then we have the red thing which is where your power comes in. So ordinarily with your regular power brick thus you connect that to the red when you're using it as a regular laptop. If you're switching over to the dock then you use this different power brick here which is a 300 watt thing which connects to the side of the dock and then when you put the laptop in the dock and you engage uh, you run the power from the dock through the laptop. So the dock. And again, photos on KitGuru to give you close-ups. On this side, we have a liquid cooling pump. Uh, under these uh, grills, we've got a pair of radiators. They're described as 92 mil radiators. I haven't pulled this apart to have a good look at the insides. In a way, it doesn't matter. There's a couple of radiators and fans in there. The liquid is pumped from the laptop all is happy. And then this here engages and when the laptop's in place it locks it. These uh, things come across. So the laptop sits on these uh, cones. Two cones also engage in the rear. Everything lined up that. Uh, Azus tells us that it is possible that when you break the liquid connections, remove the laptop in other words, you may occasionally get the odd drop of liquid uh, I haven't had that happen to me at all. They're saying if it happens, it doesn't matter. The thing can shed a little bit of liquid over time. Uh, you may possibly have to do something about that after a couple of years. Can't speak about that. Don't know what you do. Uh, it must be feasible. But so far to me, the thing has been absolutely bone dry. That's the basics of the outside, what's going on inside. Once you pull off the bottom cover of the laptop to reveal the innards, Pretty much everything becomes clear. Um, perhaps the biggest surprise actually, considering we're looking at a liquid cool laptop, is that the battery is so huge. That was quite unexpected. But uh, still, we can see the innards. So we have the uh, regular heat pipes and two uh, coolers, which we'd expect to see in any large high performance laptop uh, exiting to the two sides. And then we have this extra bit. This is what it's all about. And we can see that what's happened is that uh, liquid comes in and out there. Uh, I don't know which, uh, which is in and which is out, but it flows through this uh, pipe here. And there we have a uh, liquid cooling block. So it's taking heat uh, from the block beneath and transferring it to the liquid system. Very neat. Uh, so they've packaged the one system on top of the other. Uh, therefore, when you don't have the liquid cooling dock connected, you're using these heat pipes here, these coolers here, plug that in and well, hey, you've got extra cooling. Um, very, very nifty. 
you can also see we have, uh, in addition, as I said, the battery, we've also got two memory uh, modules, we have Wi-Fi, and we have there uh, an SSD. Now this um, layout of this laptop is uh, cards on both sides of the motherboard. In actual fact, this model shouldn't have those two memory uh, modules there. They should both be on the top, uh, leaving these two slots free. But then uh, we often get this with the review uh, samples. They're not quite as per the uh, retail version. Uh, the other SSD is on the top of the board. Uh, so so the fact I've pulled this apart to have a look at what's going on, this isn't really a, a laptop you're going to upgrade easily. If you wanted to go to 64 gig of memory, you'd have to basically pull the motherboard out to get to the top, uh, and that's hard work. Similarly, if you're monkeying around with SSD RAID, um, quite clearly, if you change this SSD for a higher capacity SSD, well, you've mucked your RAID up completely. They actually say in the instructions to as, um, Asus, you would have to back up all your data, uh, break the RAID, install a new SSD, say a, you know, a 500 or one terabyte, 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, uh, and then run it as a single fast SSD. Alternatively, you're pulling the thing apart to install two new SSDs. In the great scheme of things, that ain't going to happen. Anyway, those are the main components, but this right here, this is what it's all about. With the GX700 plugged into the liquid cooling dock, it looks impressive it looks awesome and also to a certain extent it looks pretty stupid i mean it's just vast the laptop itself weighs 3.6 kilos they say with battery the battery's inside so that's daft of course it's with a battery the dock weighs 4.8 kilos put the whole shooter match together that's eight and a half kilos quite clearly in the main you'll be using the laptop when you're out and about and you'll come home to the dock you could of course use that luggage i showed you earlier to take holding off to a land party or something of that ilk that would be entirely feasible after it's got wheels why not but why on earth would you spend three and a half grand on a laptop that's this big and heavy unless it delivers some results? Thankfully, the answer is it delivers and it delivers big time. Um, if we, figures on KitGuru, as ever, graphs on KitGuru, yada yada, screen grabs and all the rest of it, okay. Um, if we run the laptop just as a laptop with the air cooling and so on, it performs as well as you'd expect from a Core i7 with a GTX 980 and SSD and loads of RAM, which is pretty blooming well. Temperatures are exactly where you would expect. So under stress test load, not gaming load, but stress test load, the CPU is 72 Celsius, the graphics 64 Celsius, absolutely normal, laptop, big thumbs up, happy. When you plug it into the dock and just run everything again on the same clock speeds, the temperatures plummet. The CPU 48 degrees and the GPU 37 degrees. And that's stress test, gaming it's less. Uh, which is actually, if you've ever had a PC with a proper cooling loop, which cools both graphics and CPU, you'll recognize those temperatures. In fact, by PC standards, they're still a little high, but then it's a small cooling system. Um, impressive. But would you pay loads of money to drop your temperatures a bit? No, you wouldn't, not probably. Even though you might, but no. Uh, the answer is to the why would you do it question is overclocking. When you plug the laptop into the dock and then you open uh, the uh, ROG Gaming Center software and then you click on this little icon and again photos screen grabs etc on kit guru and then you open this sort of sub menu he says dragging his pages sub menu which shows you what everything's doing you can overclock the system without much difficulty and i already have just to read the numbers i'll turn it back cpu is running 10 percent overstock at, you can either do five or ten percent gpu is running 150 megahertz overstock cpu there gpu there again screen grabs on kit guru i found this software work very well i was using those numbers by the way they were suggested by zeus and i, I didn't delve too hard and try and jump uh, bump the uh uh, GPU up a little higher or indeed GPU memory higher. CPU on the other hand plus 5 plus 10 percent you go for 10 percent don't you? Uh, I did have one slightly intriguing thing which was that the CPU uh, the software different utilities seem to recognize it in different ways. Um, CPU Z recognized it as one model uh, and uh, uh, Ada 64 which has a version of CPU Z built into it uh, CPU Z for Americans um, uh, thought it was the correct processor. Speed also is, is an interesting thing. I, I'm, it's 3.6 gigahertz maximum turbo. Uh, I was seeing reports of 3.7 gigahertz and that's only significant because in the great scheme of things, 100 megahertz, whatever, is because 
3.6 plus 10%, which is the max allowed by the software with the cooling dock engaged, gives you 3.96, just under four gigahertz. On the other hand, 3.7 plus 10% is a little over. However, if we put that to one side, the retail version is absolutely definitely 3.6, so it's gonna be a shade under four gigahertz, but you round it to four gigahertz. It's a lot. Um, anyway, with those uh, clock speeds uh, engaged, this did indeed uh, bang up the temperatures, but it also raised performance. So, and again, figures on kick in the usual yada yada. CPU temperature now 84 Celsius, GPU temperature 53. So CPU higher, which suggests that 10% is absolutely pushing it to the limit. On the other hand, it worked perfectly well. Uh, if you want to be a bit more cautious, maybe 5%. Um, the intriguing thing was that those extra bits of percentage of uh, speeds made a massive difference to gaming, not necessarily to the peak frame rates, uh, but it raised the minimum significantly. So in GTA 5, where we've been running in the sort of 48 frames per second average, which went up to 69, I mean, that's a big jump, uh, but the minimum went from 19, which is not great, but then GTA 5 has sort of lurches in it, and went up to 25, but the experience, taking the numbers out of the equation, the experience was, ooh, and it just whooshed along absolutely beautifully. Um, so you've got the option of bumping up uh, clock speeds or of dropping temperatures, or you could go for a kind of a compromise. But without a shadow of a doubt, the performance was uh, truly epic. Let me just close this down and get GTA 5 running to show you. So GTA 5, image quality set high. We're using three gig out of the eight gig of graphics memory, which takes us back to that time on a question of what on earth is eight gig or six gig or whatever of memory for on full HD. Uh, and the answer is not a lot of use past the 4K panel, whether you want 4K remains to be seen. Uh, so that's just gonna run through the usual benchmarks just to show you how smooth it all flows and how lovely it is. Um, now, You'll appreciate I've got the thing facing me, uh, the, the cooling is facing me, uh, which is the opposite of what you normally expect, you're normally shielded by the screen, which means that I'm getting the worst case scenario, which is I'm behind the thing while it's running, and I can hear it. No toys about it, the two fans are here, they're blowing. Um, ordinarily, it's pretty much silent. The laptop uh, in air-cooled mode, with the temps relatively high and performance good, is nearly silent. When I put it in the dock and ran it on stock clocks, the temperatures plummeted and it was nearly silent. Ramping up the clock speeds to get maximum performance, I can hear it. I cannot claim it's offensive in the slightest. Uh, to give you an easy comparison, it sounds just like, and this will be no surprise to you, an all-in-one liquid cooler in a PC, which of course it is. Uh, it's two rads rather than one new big job. Uh, it's got two fans and it has the advantage which is behind the screen. Clearly, if you had a wall right here, you get a certain amount of reflection, but that's up to you. Uh, so, the engineering of the cooling system, uh, absolutely exemplary. I can pick no fault whatsoever with the Zeus. They haven't done something silly and tried to crowbar a cooling system into the laptop. They've given it external. Obviously, that gives you extra bulk, but it means the laptop is simply a large laptop rather than some ginormo luggable thing. Uh, the hardware works, it works exactly as you would hope, entirely pleased. What do I think of the laptop itself? I, I like it. Um, whether you want a laptop that's in the you know, three and a half kilo territory remains to be seen, but it, it, it's a fine laptop. Every aspect of it is good. Uh, I am absolutely torn, when you get to a laptop 17.3 inch on the diagonal, I'm absolutely torn whether you want it to be full HD or 4K. 4K works at this sort of size. When you're smaller than this, it's, it's just unnecessary. But you need a huge amount of graphics power to drive it along. I mean, absolutely mental. GTX 980 can do it, but you need to change your settings occasionally. What you really want with 4K is dual GTX 980s. And in the laptop, I mean, I mean conceivable, but it would cost even more, of course, and whether it would work properly, who knows, um, maybe you need, uh, it, the, the implication is, is um, significant. So going for the single GTX 980 desktop graphics with a full, full HD panel, I can see the logic of it. Part of me wants that 4K. I'm kind of glad they didn't do it. The only weakness of this laptop, apart from the price, 
is bloatware. I was getting wound up somewhat by McAfee pop-ups and did I want to install Dropbox and oh look here's Azus web storage and such like all the standard Azus bloatware that I've come to hate. Uh, it's not the end of the world and quite clearly if I installed a few of those bits and pieces that's the end of it. You're not going to get uh, nagged again and again and again. But it, it's part of the experience I don't enjoy. In terms of the styling, the titanium copper thing, there's a clear panel on the bottom so you can kind of see what's going on inside, sort of, but not really. The ROG keyboard, the red illumination, the logos, the this, the that, the other. Um, absolutely terrific. Uh, no complaints about that at all. Pull this back to square one. Do you want a laptop that can perform at epic levels? It's a big question. Uh, if you play games and you want something that's portable-ish, but you don't have to take a screen with you and such like, in a sense, this is the ultimate LAN machine. It will do all that without a problem. If you really want maximum performance, you can probably still do better than even this beefiest of beefy laptops. Um, there are portable-ish uh, machines, but they'll cost even more than that. I mean, you're into a terrible, terrible world of more than three and a half grand once you're into, into crazy, crazy performance. As things stand, the GX700 is epically impressive. It works like a dream. It delivers exactly what Azus promised. The price is stupendous. The fact it comes with luggage on those things. Uh, uh, it is truly impressive uh, and I don't know whether anybody else is going to produce a liquid cooled laptop. Azus is absolutely first and they've done a stunning job. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is the ROG GX700.